Security with software delivery. Now, at your workplace, hopefully you don't do it the old fashioned way where you work up front on a piece of software and then come a certain deadline, you do a security audit. Now you wouldn't want to do that now, would you, right? <laughs> That's crazy. What you want to do is shift left and incorporate security practices into your pipeline. Let me share with you a couple examples where I think it gets a little weird. Exhibit A is a Terraform project, which I enabled security advisories and alerts and such and so forth. And under this tab here comes this vulnerability alerts. And inside this closed one, I was flagged for, for having a security vulnerability due to the fact that I wasn't using an encry encrypted SNS topic. For, for those who don't know, it's like you kind of have to like opt in for security for some AWS resources. I don't know why, like S3 and SNS. I don't know why it's so boring like that. And then when you do, it then sort of complains that you don't use a customer managed key. Now, a customer managed key is a very big topic, but the way I think of it is that it's a kill switch. The idea is that if you don't want your S3 buckets to have your customer data, you revoke the customer, the CMK or something like that, and then everything gets killed. But that's that's uh, quite tricky to do. It's quite complicated. And by default, TFSec expects you to basically have a CMK on an SNS target. SNS is not like holding uh, necessarily customer data. It's just transmitting it, right? It's like a little uh, communication pipe, you can think of it. So essentially what I had to do was add some ignore, uh, TFSec ignore lines into my code. So you add those lines and then the, the alerts get closed. Now the next problem, if, if you're in a commercial setting, you, you probably now need to add this to some sort of a risk register, you know, communicate with your stakeholders. And, and then, I, I mean, these these topics are kind of difficult to talk through, right? Especially if your if your client is is not especially technical, right? Explaining all these these things that you're now ignoring, I am ignoring a secure a medium security issue, is um is a bit is a bit challenging. My next exhibit is a GoLang program, and it was and all of a sudden it was like failing a uh, check here. One very important thing to do is is re run your pipelines regularly. Otherwise, you get surprised like this, as I was. <laughs> but unfortunately, GitHub workflows disable after a, a, a while if you don't make any code changes. <laughs> but anyway, here is an interesting issue here. G114CW676. Use of net HTTP serve function as noticeable. Another, a confidence high, severity medium security warning in my shift left uh, pipeline process here. So it's, it's essentially the too long DR here is that Golang code by default, if you use the listen and serve thing, basically if you're setting up an HTTP uh, server, is considered insecure unless you set a timeout. Now you might be thinking like, as I was, well, well, well why isn't there a timeout by default? Or, you know, why isn't Go secure by default? Why? It's, it's not exactly like I've, I've made a mistake here. And, and this is what I expect my linter to do. It's, it's in order to to sort of catch mistakes in coding, not the fact that, that Go by default has something wrong with it, right? I didn't find any issues in the Go upstream, is what I was trying to say here about this particular thing. So now I have this problem as a, as a code developer that I need to start ignoring something that's, there's nothing to do with my code, but some insecure default of Go, which I find very hard to believe. And furthermore, while we're on this topic, when you deploy any Go uh, HTTP service, 99 times out of 100, you deploy behind some sort of reverse proxy, which will protect it from like these weird timeout attacks and things like this. So I, I really feel that these sort of errors are kind of like, kind of daft. And again, do I have to ignore them? I mean, uh, and then, and if I was in a professional setting and raise it on the, on the, on the risk register and have meetings with my stakeholders about this new risk that we have to now manage, it makes everyone look bad here. I do find it a little bit weird that like, you know, depending how you set up your pipeline, 
in GitHub, it's the UI has things spread or spread around now. You have Dependabot, you have code alerts, and of course you have uh, you know the pipeline failures and things like this to deal to deal with. It's kind of like in different places here. And I want you to rewind to what I said right in the beginning. I can't help but think the audit with the third party security company does have its merits here because now with the shift lift practices, which are better, you now have to manage everything yourselves. And that means if something goes wrong, you are now culpable. I feel like sometimes it's very attractive for clients to hire third party security teams in some ways because then they can just offset the risk and offset the, the, the culpability of the risk because now it's on that security team to, to, to fix the problems. But it's not great, but I'm just saying that uh, these conversations that now have to happen interna internally are quite painful. And as a, as a, as a builder myself, I, I'm often, to be frank, frustrated with these conversations because they're kind of boring. And uh, I'm wondering how you guys deal with these sort of problems. And if I'm missing any tricks, keep on shifting left, guys. Please like the video and subscribe. Bye.